you've already read the Wowhead guides that I've warned you what you should do on your character before pre-patch. Something they haven't prepared you for is your add-on updates. With any pre-patch, add-ons are going to break. That's just a rule of thumb. But how do you prepare for that? How do you know your add-ons are already compatible? And how do you know which ones aren't? And what's going to break? Well, to start, the API changes that are expected tomorrow are mostly going to break add-ons have to do with accessing spells or the spellbook and the mouse focus. So if your add-ons aren't updated, expect add-ons centered around mostly about the, around the spells and the mouse to break. Or just add-ons that haven't been updated in quite some time to also break. You know, ones that might have continued working in most recent Dragonflight patches, but they haven't actually been updated since the start of Dragonflight. Those add-ons are definitely going to break because the pre-patch is removing all the deprecations. Now, what does that mean? It means it removes all the backwards compatibility code that existed for add-ons that were straggling behind a few versions. That's what's going to break. So how do you know if your add-on is going to break or is updated? Well, there are multiple ways to check, but the easiest is to open your first Forge app or Wago app or whatever, and look at game version right here. All these add-ons that say 11.02 or 11.00 are fully compatible with the pre-patch tomorrow because those add-on authors specifically tested their code and marked the version that it's compatible with as 11.0. The add-ons that don't say that, they say 10.27 or even worse, older, like 10.002, are more likely to break tomorrow because that add-on author has not flagged their add-on as compatible yet. Does that mean the add-on is broken? No, it just means it's more likely to not be compatible compared to the ones that have pretty much guaranteed it because they've already gone on to PTR or beta and tested and updated their code accordingly and then flagged their add-on as compatible. But what if you don't use CurseForge or Wago app? How do you check this? We can go to either CurseForge or Wago website, click an add-on, then on CurseForge you'll click on the retail version obviously. Then right here all supported game versions are listed. You can see this one's compatible with retail 11.02, 11.00, and 10.27. Over here on Wago, just click the add-on, click on releases, and it lists the game versions again. This release is compatible with all these game versions. And the ones that are, concern us are the red ones, retail. 10.27, 11.00, 11.02. This add-on is compatible with the pre-patch, and you know that already just at a glance. But now, how do you test the ones that say older versions like this to see maybe they're just not flagged compatible, but they still are? Well, that comes down to running this add-on, BugSack, and its companion add-on, Bug Wrapper are tools that make Lua errors in-game much more pleasant, more or less. To the base game, the way Lua errors work is they spam your screen to death with pop-ups that are annoying. So users have a tendency to turn them off. So that's kin to pulling the bulb out of your check engine light. You don't want to do that. Instead, you want to have an add-on like this that takes those errors and aggregates them in one single space. Now these are errors from a previous session because I was testing which add-ons are compatible with the pre-patch and Quartz obviously failed that test. I have no errors right now because Quartz is disabled. But let's say I turn Quartz back on. Now I'm getting five errors on login. But notice the key thing here? I have no pop-up on my screen. Nothing intrusive. I can still move my character around, I can still fly around, I can fight in combat, and I'm not getting spammed to death with pop-ups. That's what this add-on does. 
instead of taking the check or, or the light light bulb out of your check engine light, make your check engine light be less shitty. Because the way Blizzard designed it is, they cover your fucking windshield. Imagine if you got in your car and if your check engine light was on, you couldn't see out your windshield. That's a shitty design. That's Blizzard's fault. But the, the way they generate Lua errors, they make them so horrendously bad, that's no wonder users turn them off. Because they don't know they can install this add-on, which fixes the reporting to not be shit, to put bluntly. And that's the key right here. Errors help inform you what add-ons are not compatible with the patch tomorrow and what add-ons should be disabled. Because if I leave this add-on enabled, I might not have working cast bars because it's replacing the Blizzard cast bars, but it's not functional. So now I just have no cast bars. And you want to avoid that. You might also have performance issues if it's spamming errors. This one's not spamming errors excessively. Granted, I'm not casting anything. It might be an error every time I try to cast. I didn't really test that. But the point is, you use BugSack to figure out which add-ons are compatible. Because some add-ons I have enabled here, they have not bumped their TOC. I'll uncheck this. Classic quest log. Its flag is not compatible unless I load out a date. But it works just fine. Because it's compatible, the author just hasn't gone into their add-on yet and bumped the TOC, which is what we call it, that flags what game version it's compatible with. And then what you do from then on the next few days, you pretty much go in here, or if you do it manually or whatever. Oh look, Plato has an update since I started this video. I want to see if it's a flag that is compatible. What did they do with the add-on? Gosh, recently updated. Plato, see, look, this is perfect. They literally just released a compatible update in the last 10 minutes since I started recording this. Before I clicked update, it said 10 to 7. Now it's 11.00. That is how you know. And thank you, Plater, for making my video that much better. Your timing is impressive. But you'll be hitting this button constantly until you get all your add-ons working. And if sometimes the add-on you like is never updated. Sometimes you might have to find a new add-on that's compatible with the patch if it's never updated. I have add-ons in here that haven't been updated since 9.0, but they still work because it's not just a handy note. You know, sometimes, sometimes an add-on just doesn't break for a long time. Sometimes it does. But it's trial and error, and BugSack will help you the most with it because, like I said, fix, or make your check engine light better. Don't disable it. And have a much better experience with the pre-patch. I hope this video was helpful to you, and I'll see you in the next one.